We cut one at a time. These are live. Uh, don't do this at home. Timestamp. It is 9 11 a.m. Uh, it's time for me to get temporary power for this job. That's trash. Unless you want it, I could mail it to you or I'll put it in my trash box. It's up to you. Okay, we're hot on the line side. We're now de energized on the load side. And I'm going to rig up some temporary power because what I need to do is eliminate this conduit. New surface is going back in this location. So I need to eliminate this conduit and then core out the larger hole. And I need shore power for my hydraulic bender. Literally three quarters of an inch from the potential of a massive arc. Must be careful. Boom, boom. No short in the cord. That's always good. <clears throat> be a smart idea to put um, an inline fuse on your hot conductor. Provide overcurrent protection but I don't generally make a practice of this. I'm not gonna equip myself for it in any kind of fantastic manner. See if that little stranded conductor grabs, takes. We're good to go. Let's run it. It is 9.24. I'm gonna use my hydraulic easily bender. This is made for IMC and RMC conduit. I opened the case up yesterday and looked inside of it and saw this. It was like, <laughs> no hardened steel bolts, ground rods. I don't even know that that's gonna hold. This is really super sketchy. So I requested two three quarter inch hardened steel bolts, six inches long, <sighs> but it is what it is today. Um, I've got my temporary power hooked in. I need a seven inch offset at 52. I've got some grace because I haven't mounted the meter base yet. This task is one that I perform infrequently. So I wanted to bend the conduit up first and then set my meter base to the appropriate height so it looked because um, I've got a total of one foot of latitude based upon the AES gold book specification. Five foot to six foot and that's going to be the grace I need for the lack of precision due to my lack of experience. All right, release the pressure. And my ground rods held. <laughs> that is so yeah. unprofessional. All right, pressure on the head is slowly coming off. One thing to note is, this is just Sharpie down here, but you wanna have, this has got four settings. It's for one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two inch, and I've got the two inch dip, which matches the curvature of the pipe towards the pipe so that it settles in there real nicely. Now the first bend is the easy one. The second one is more difficult. Um, there's math to this. I actually never learned the math. I learned the folding roll method. And so that's the method I use, but it's pretty reliable for me. Not great if you've got a bunch of pipes that have got to line up perfectly. Um, uh, but here we go. Welcome to Electric Pro Academy, where we make real mistakes, so hopefully you don't. <laughs> this pipe only costs like $85 now. If I screw it up, it's, it's toast. I don't have a replacement with me. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So nerve wracking. All right, it's probably gonna have a little bit of deflection. Come on. It's like playing adult video games. So much fun. I end up with a dog leg. I'm gonna have to use the old truck tire trick. Oh, man, look at that. Kind of an intense dog leg, actually. I should have I should have laid down on my belly first. That's a dog leg, about a 10 degree inflection to the right. Maybe less than that, four. Boo! 
All the commercial electricians who bend this kind of pipe every day are laughing right now, but guess what? I don't. <laughs> okay, so that's the meter base side. We do need a little bit more, which is okay. It gives us a chance to correct. The question is the best place to approach. So I should have had my conduit in a single plane. And what I did was, how do I describe this? That first offset, instead of being in a true horizontal plane, it was actually probably sagging towards the ground a little bit because I didn't have a perfectly level. Uh, so sagging, so when we bent that second one, we ended up with a three-dimensional bend instead of a two-dimensional bend. So I think I want to put the bender on. We got it. <clears throat> okay, time to rock and roll. It is 10:13. We filmed two shorts. We are well on the way on this project. We've had a couple good laughs, and we're ready to start trial fitting our equipment into place. The producer part of me wants to stop and tell you what the heck is going on here I've, as I've got this unlimited power supply fed right off the utility pole hanging in free air. See what I want is my meter base and my service to be in compliance with the National Electrical Code, of course, and the Gold Book Standard. What I'm doing is I'm maintaining power while I build the new service because I need a couple of power tools like this guy which I'll pull out in a minute. And so I'm doing everything on the exterior one, before it gets too hot, and two, it's going to dominate the interior plan. The exterior is where I need the power for penetrations, ground rod driving. I can do some of this cordless, but it's easier and faster to do it with big tools that are corded. So um, all, the, all my fave tools are out on other jobs today, so I'm kind of patching this together. So almost always take care of the exterior first and then work my way to the interior, but you've got to understand in the project where the linchpin is, where the critical factor, the central, the, the pivot point, you know? And right now that's the exterior, my power, and my penetration to the interior. All right, thank you. Thank you, Austin. See ya. Bye. Okay, so we've, um, we've acquired a smaller company and that's one of our new team members um, this is pretty dynamic it's keeping me super busy it's it's running smoothly but they're just all these little wrinkles that need to be ironed out and um, lots of communication flying around details to pin down attitudes uh, the spirit is up but the uh, I'm a little sick right now under the weather, and I think that's just the extra workload getting to me. I'm uh, spending a lot of time awake at night, and that's just the wheels spinning, taking, I'm, <laughs> I'm setting reminders, like every two hours I'm like waking up, thinking of something, setting a reminder, trying to get back to sleep, boom, back awake 30 minutes later, setting another reminder, setting out a slack, it's just the, the brain is on over, and uh, making my body sick. Overdrive, overdrive. Okay, so we're gonna reuse this search protector, SPD, as it's known to be called in the National Electrical Code. So I like that. I'm not gonna unland circuits 
until I notate my labeling of what we've got here. Someone else is gonna take care of the interior build out. This is gonna get turned into an Airbnb down here. And so I've intentionally excluded bonding of gas and water lines in my scope because a 100 amp panel is bonded with number eight copper. A 200 amp panel is bonded with number four copper. And, uh, but, but this is getting all mix and mash, bathrooms, kitchens. So if I run an expensive bond wire, that's gonna cost me two bucks a foot, only to find out later that the ceiling comes out, all the water lines get replaced when the kitchen bathroom are plum plumbed in. Mm -mm. Excluded from scope of work, and the electrician who's working with the GC at a later date can take care of that, and hopefully that's me. Nice accessory hook for my light, love it. Oh, <clears throat> I like where this is coming in pretty well. My new panel is here. Let's just open that up <clears throat> and see how that's gonna line up. Whoop, here's my, you see what we did? <clears throat> this is real easy, guys. Um, we've got an all-star on our team. Her name is Angel, and she created these for us. She's an administrative assistant. QR code, customer walks up to their electrical panel, scan, boom, goes straight to the contact us page. They've got our phone number, um, email address, physical address, and it's right there. So we can do that. That makes a lot of sense to me. Come in that top knockout. I'm gonna get rid of this, because that's part of the old Man, look at that nice electrical connection they made there. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Okay, I like it. We're gonna keep the same penetration. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the conductors out of the way. <clears throat> I'm gonna oh, make a bit of a mess down here because this whole space is getting remodeled. Carpet's being torn out. The customer looked at me and he said I needed 200 amp service as cheap as possible. No Leviton, no span, no bells and whistles. I am providing an exterior disconnect. It's $2,000 project start to finish one day. If you're not turning over at least $1,000 per man per day in gross revenue for your electrical team members that are in the field, you're probably underbidding your jobs or you're probably settling for um, a suboptimal market segment of customers. Oh. Now on bigger projects, that number's gonna be lower. On small service work, that number's probably gonna be higher. The more material you have involved, obviously, and permits and whatnot drives that number up. Oh, but that's an easy number for your guys to hold on to as they're working. An individual daily goal. They, our numbers are pretty transparent with all of our team members across the board and everything we're doing. And um, that allows them to see what they're generating to know if they've achieved the goal or not. And I think that increases morale when it's not behind the curtain. It's transparent, it's visible, and they know that they are succeeding as opposed to wondering if you're happy. There's so much impeccable craftsmanship that's going on here. The uh, ground twisty, look at that. Check two more twisties, just, just for safety, right? Just, just for safety. But here's the kicker, look what I just found. Haven't even touched the terminal screw yet on the air conditioner. That's the air conditioner we're talking about. Hi, amp draw. There's not even an impression on the copper wire. Sick, sick that thing. I can't believe it's not burned up. I wonder if that was recently tampered with. We are in the basement, immediately opposite the electrical service. We're gonna be utilizing the same penetration so that we don't have to seal that hole up. The panel labeling is pretty much non-existent. The only thing is kitchen, which is non-specific, and the air conditioner. And because of all the remodel wiring that's gonna take place down here, we're just gonna sock it and rock it. When you're removing conductors, that you're taking note of what everything is. In fact, I should probably go ahead and take my photo, rudimentary photo before it's too late. And what I'm looking for is maybe they've reversed and they've got a black conductor on the neutral bar, a neutral conductor or a white conductor on a breaker. You just don't know what you might come across, but you wanna be aware and probably wanna put it back the way it is and then do some testing before there's any live equipment in the house that could suffer damage or any personnel that could sh suffer shock. You just don't know. So eyes and ears, wide open. This is one of the most important steps 
it's easy, but in that regard, it's easy to get it wrong. Any grounding system that's old, like this is potentially original to 1959, I'm not gonna count on those ground rods. They're gonna be so deteriorated by the acidity of the soil, at least in our jurisdiction. I think the conductivity is probably substandard. So we're replacing it. New grounding system ain't gonna count on anything that's in place in that regard. All of this is trash. It's currently 1058. We've got the panel downstairs to take it apart and we've got two more things to do today. We need to go do a billboard inspection. There are uh, power requirements. See, a digital billboard face pulls quite a bit of juice and it costs a quarter million dollars. And this billboard is getting two new digital faces. It's going from static to digital. And I believe it's underserved and needs branch circuits to pull 60, I believe. 120, 240, two pole 60 up to each billboard face. So if you're interested in that video, check it out here. And uh, then we got a lunch and learn with a Levitson rep. And if you're interested in that video, check it out over there. But what I wanna do before we take off in 35 minutes is I wanna finish using our power and de-energize this so we're not walking away from a hazard and do a little tidy up so our tools aren't gone by the time we get back. We're gonna make our penetration into the house. I'm gonna run a series of holes, because like I said, all the core drills were already checked out for other jobs. A series of holes around this to open it up for uh, essentially a three inch clear is what I'd like to have. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room on my two inch conduit and then a, a small enough joint around the perimeter that I can seal it up with my OSI. The mortar's gonna fall apart on me. Okay, there it is! Woo! Not too bad. I can seal that up, particularly once you've got the hub and the LB. That'll work. That'll work. That'll do, pig. That'll do. We live to see another day! Okay. Okay. <sighs> Time to cut that free and tape it up. And cut one at a time. These are live. Uh, don't do this at home. I need to be careful or I might catch my wig on fire. All right, coming right off the utility pole. I'm just gonna tape up the ends. This is exactly what the linemen do. Oh. There it goes. Before we go to lunch, we're gonna do the due diligence of putting sealant in our penetrations into the house because they'll pull loose if you don't over time with water infiltration. What would it look like if you cared on your jobs? No, that's, that's spicy, Joel. Don't worry, don't worry about me. So unfortunately, I already put the sealant up there, but we do need to mark our... It's very, it's very top, top heavy. heavy. We can go all the way to the wall. Yep, there it is. Okay. You guys, I think this turned out really good. Like we recovered from near disaster. Our utility does require at least one fastener between meter base and gutter. And then we're gonna have rigid tiebacks from the mast back to the roof. And I'm gonna cut this mast down, but I wanted to get it this part done before we released Tim back to his virtual reality. It's happening. <clears throat> I added a couple washers back here to space that up. I, get, I feel like I could do pull-ups on this right now, but I'm not going to. Okay, uh, this is the kind of naggy little problem. The supply house didn't deliver the part, the trailer panel that we should have had in the stock. That trailer panel was gonna go right here. Instead, I was forced to use this square D. However, when I was picking up the square D in a pinch, what I didn't pay attention to is that square D has got a different hub style. The hub is this guy right here. I do not have a hub like that with me. So I can't put this here. 
because it's not going to be watertight. So if I put it here, then I've got to have conductors that come out of here, cross, and land. And by the time I come back out of here and go inside, I think I'm going to come up short on wire. Boo! Okay, it's not that complicated. I know you guys saw it. We'll just put it right here. We'll punch through, we'll land in the equipment, and we'll have a shorter distance on both this run and that run. Emergency diverted. It's 420. We're burning time with the lunch and learn. You can check out that video here with the billboard escapade that was not a pop over pop back. Turned into more like a Joel of the Amazon hobo train hopping, railroad track dodging. I don't know. It's nuts. It's crazy. The Lennox. The Lennox, what's the part number? 17 piece electrician's whole saw kit, 3080211200L. Dynamite. All right, guys, bond bushings. Here's the deal metallic conduit. My utility here, AES, does not want to see any grounding conductors in the meter cabinet. Zero zilch, only the grounded conductor, which is the neutral. I know it's confusing, grounding versus grounded. However, because we've got a metallic meter fitting, we've got to have a bond bushing to bond the cabinet through the enamel to this fitting so that just in case that becomes energized, it doesn't fault to you or to me, it faults to the cabinet and to ground. So, I'm gonna spin that thing. It's where I can access those two terminals. This goes right there, and that's where my ground conductor is gonna be terminated. I'm gonna spin the screw out so I've got access to it. Snug that down, and you tighten that down, and that is gonna secure. All right, now we've got a it's not going anywhere. There it is. Boom. As soon as we put a ground Dean conductor from there to our ground terminal down here, we're good. Indiana. My name is Shayla. How can I help you on your business account? Hi Shayla. My name is Joel Walsman and I'm with Jefferson Electric and we're doing some service work on a customer's residential 200 amp service and I'm ready for a lineman to do a disconnect so that I can safely and properly service that equipment. Is this going to be for under that overhead service? Overhead. Okay, and are you needing a, a temporary service or permanent service? Um, the service is already here. We're just doing some work to it. And we, uh, I'm actually working a little bit late, but calling for a disconnect of power. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, you broke up a little bit. I think I heard a little bit. Did you state that you just want to upgrade the amp? That's right. And I'm ready for a disconnect of power. If you're looking for more of a step-by-step -step instructional on this, where we explain almost everything in detail, check out this video here, or that video there, or this other one over there, because we got a bunch of videos like this. It just depends on whether you're doing overhead, or underground, or three phase, or single phase, or just gotta slip in a disconnect because you've been tagged by the inspector. We got all kinds of videos, so check our library. <laughs> Installing the weatherhead with no locks so that it's serviceable in the future, and the ferrous metals, i.e threaded steel bolts are not all seized up. Because if one of those big branches, that tree comes down, boom, and it's already lost actually a couple of chunks there. Falls on the line, rips it free. If it's all, everything's all seized up together, then you're paying an electrician to rebuild and replace everything. And probably in an emergency, and it'll probably cost you two grand not to upgrade the whole service, but just to upgrade half of it. You'll be paying double twice. So we wanna keep as much of this as serviceable as stout, one, on the installation, and as serviceable, two, for the repair. Because that d does happen. Just gotta work that. <clears throat> Plastic piece is brittle. And you definitely have to have it. If, the, if it's not in there, birds will build nests and the utility will flag it and gotta get that insert. There it is. 
First try, echo locate works. It's a little cumbersome this time, but we got it. I'm dejected, I'm ready to go home. See, sometimes we just bust to the finish. We work till midnight, 5.30 in the morning, but sometimes we say, subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money. I'm coming back tomorrow to button up. I'm going home to my family tonight. I'll see you guys next time.